Ruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Um, this week in our series of My Thoughts, uh, we're going to do a double lecture in the sense of this will span two weeks. The topic is um, original sin. And we know that most of the people in the world have heard or believe in what is called the original sin. Now in the book of Bereshit Genesis, the Torah tells us the story of the six days of creation. It tells us that on the sixth day of creation, God created the crown jewel of creation, man. A being created, as we say, in the image of God. Man was created perfect. He was not the product of a relationship between a man and a woman. He was created directly by the hands of God, so to speak. He was first formed with mud into what you would call a lifeless doll. And then God blew into his nostrils the breath of life, a soul that originated from within God himself. That lifeless doll then became Adam, the first man in creation. Again, Adam from the word Adama, meaning earth. Again, it's by which he was made from. In fact, that's why we call earth Mother Earth, by virtue of that. We have a tradition that when we are in our mother's womb, that an angel is there with us and teaches us all the Torah. When we are born, the devil waits at the door, so to speak, our birth, and touches us with a finger below our noses, and that makes us forget all that we've learned. All of us have this little mark right below our nose. So we are born without cognitive knowledge. However, Adam, first man's soul, came directly from heaven and was not the subject to, not subject to the interference of the devil. He was created with all of his godly and spiritual greatness. Upon his creation, man was created by God to keep just one commandment. Of all the trees of the garden he could eat except for one tree, it was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was the only tree that he could not partake of its fruit. All the other fruits, all the other trees were permissible. Now according to our sages, Adam, first man, was created on the ninth hour of the sixth day. The command that restricted eating from the tree, according to many of the commentators, was only in the last three hours. When Shabbat, the seventh day, would arrive, he would then be able to partake of even that fruit. Was he such a glutton that in less than three hours he had tasted of all the other trees in the garden, and now he needed something new? There is a whole question of how long were the six days of creation. Some say there were days, as we experience them, to them today, 24 hours. Others say, based on the verse in Tehillim, chapter 90, verse 4, that one day in God's life is like a thousand years in our lives. And that would make a big difference. Now, instead of three hours, we may be looking at 300 years. That would put a totally different spin on the whole story of eating from the tree. As an aside, what type of tree was the tree of knowledge? Now, of course, there are different opinions, Jewish. Some say it was a fig, based on the wording of the verse that they covered their privates. Again, they were naked in the garden. And so they, when they ate, they realized that they were naked and covered their privates with fig leaves. The Medrash says that they tried to take other leaves to cover their nakedness, but the other trees refused to give up their leaves to those that had sinned against God's command. Others say the fruit was wheat. <clears throat> Before his sin, man, again, was the crown jewel of creation, and that being the case, it would not have been proper for him to have to bend down to procure his food. So in the beginning of creation, wheat and barley both grew on a tree so that man would, so to speak, reach up, and they were edible without any further preparation like any other fruit. Now, Israel, the land of Israel, is known for seven special species of produce. They are figs and dates and pomegranate, olives, which again, olive oil, grapes, again, wine, and then wheat and barley. Five of the species, figs, dates, pomegranates, olives, and grapes, are fruits, and man would reach up to eat them. After the sin and man's curse from God, that with the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. 
that being the curse, he would now have to bend down to harvest his wheat and barley. In addition, there would now be ten processes that he would have to go through in order to make his bread. It would no longer be the simple act of just lifting his hand and taking a fruit off a branch. He would now have to work much harder, back-breaking labor. Others say the tree of knowledge was an apple. You know, I always thought that was the reason why Steve Jobs named his computer Apple Computer. The symbol has an apple with a bite taken out, symbolizing that someone who wants knowledge should open up their computer, so to speak, take a bite. The most prevalent view is that the fruit of the tree was a grape. By virtue of the fact that wine is used sacrimoniously, it would seem to indicate that the grape would be the most logical choice. Using it to accompany sacrifices on the altar was a way to rectify the blemish that Adam placed on it. You know, there's a measure that states that the fruit was forbidden only temporarily. All that Adam had to do was wait until the end of the twelfth hour before he ate from the tree. He then would have squeezed the grapes, made wine, and then made kiddush. After the fruit of the tree would have been then would have been permissible permanently. Adam, according to Hasidus, felt that he didn't want the fruit to become permissible on its own, and so he became proactive. Grapes, or wine, are unique in creation. You know, we make a blessing on all foods and drink that we consume. So to speak, asking God for permission, please. Most blessings that we make are generic. They cover a broad spectrum of items. Now, there are exceptions such as bread, which has its own special blessing. Now, wine is unique among beverages. All other beverages fall under the general category of liquids, and their blessings are identical. The, the preceding, the original blessing is Shahakol Nyebivaro, that everything was created by his word. However, the grape, wine, has its own special blessing. Borei pri hagefa. Blessed be the fruit of the vine. The question is why? Wine has some very unusual characteristics. Time causes most things to spoil. It does not succumb just to the ravages of time. In fact, if the wine is superior, then it will only continue to improve. If the grapes were inferior, then, instead of turning into fine wine, it may well turn into vinegar. There's an anecdote told about the orange, the pear, and the peach that complained to God. They questioned why was it that the small grape has its own special blessing, whereas they, though they are larger, sweeter, and also give more juice, they all share one generic blessing. So God answers that though the grape may be smaller, Grapes grow together in a cluster. This alludes to the concept of what we call achtut, unity. There is nothing that God desires more than seeing all of his children getting along with each other. Again, unity. So, though there are different opinions, the fact remains that Adam and Chava, first man and woman, went against God's command and ate from the tree of knowledge. But as we look at the story, certain questions still arise. How was it possible that Chava could so easily be enticed by the snake? Why did she eat from the tree? What about God's statement that on the day that you eat from the tree, you will die? They didn't seem to die. God questioned them about their action before he declared their punishment. Why not the snake? Now, how are we to understand the punishments that were given to the three of them? So, nothing in life is an accident. What was it that God was trying to teach us <clears throat> to introduce into creation? So, again, how was Chava so easily enticed by the snake? You know, it's not unusual. Many times people are blessed with intellect. They're smart. But they do not possess common sense. She was smart, but naive. The snake was called Arum, clever. He was able to seduce her, sadly, something that he continues even today in relationships between men and women. Sometimes, some things never change. There are still many snakes in the world trying to seduce unsuspecting women. Now, her first mistake was going against the first chapter of Psalms. Psalms begins with the word Ashrei Haish, happy is the man 
who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. In reality, she had no business whatsoever talking with the serpent at all. She knew that he represented evil in the world, yet somehow she enjoyed his company. The power of attraction that the side of evil can possess, they make you feel important, even special. Evil has the ability and the talent to slyly lead you into sin. There's a verse in the book of Bereshit in the portion of Toldos, 25-27 states concerning Esau, that he was an Ishio de Atzayid, a man who knows how to trap. He was a smooth talker. He was a salesman, much like the snake. That was the dawn of creation when the evil inclination was outside of a person. Then you were able to see the serpent coming, evil. You could move to the other side of the street or just totally avo av avoid him. Imagine today after Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, we can no longer ignore evil. We have internalized evil. There's no place to run or hide. The evil inclination is in reality our subconscious. He lives with us, inside of us, and he knows us even better than we know ourselves. Secondly, she listened to the Lashon Hara, the negative speech that was said by the snake about God. He was persuasive. He began by first gently pushing her into the tree and then showing her that she didn't die. When Adam told her about the tree, he added to God's words and told her that they were even forbidden to touch the tree on a punishment of death. Now the Torah Tamima states that we add stringencies on Pesach of not even touching chametz, leaven. So what was so bad that he added a stringency? We see it at Pesach time. And the answer that chametz, leaven, is something that is permitted all year. It is only the week of Passover, Pesach, that is forbidden. However, the tree of knowledge was always forbidden to eat from, and therefore was really not like much, but similar to non-kosher food. The fact that food is non-kosher is enough of a fence. We don't need to add any more stringencies. Now, this answer is logical. It's a logical criticism of other. You should not have added. But the Barashish Rabbis tells us that at the same time, that when God was about to create first man, Adam, he made all the animals in the world pass in front of all the angels, parade in front of them. He then asked the angels to give names to these creatures. The angels were not able to do so. After God created man, he repeated the procedure and again had all the animals parade in front of Adam. He was able to name them all. In order for Adam to be able to name all the animals in the world correctly, he would have had to possess insights and wisdom that we can only marvel at. Now, if Adam was able to correctly ascertain the makeup of all various types of animals and beasts, one would think that understanding the mindset of another human being, even a woman, would be reasonable. So using his insight and deep wisdom, he concluded that it would be best in the best interest if he told Chava not to touch the tree. He may not have been wrong, but he didn't take into account the devious plan of the serpent. In fact, he may have made it easier for the serpent to cause her to sin. Now, seeing that she had already touched the tree and was still alive, the snake convinced her that she might as well taste the bark, which again was not part of the prohibition. And at this time in creation, again, there was a tree where the bark and the leaves and the fruit all tasted identical. And so she did, and she felt fine. His argument wasn't really logical. God said on the day that they ate from the tree they would die. He did not say they would die immediately on the day. Now the snake was ready to catch his prey. He told her that God originally received his power from this tree. The serpent promised that this tree would open her eyes and she would be like God knowing good and evil. You know, when Chava was created, she was actually the stronger and more aggressive of the two. We see this fact alluded to by the fact that part of her punishment after she ate, that God told her, and your husband you shall desire and he shall rule over you. God was changing her status from the stronger sex to the weaker sex. 
But at that, at this moment, the thought of taking charge and becoming God may have seemed very appealing. Now the fruit looked delightful to her eyes, and she had a deep desire to increase her wisdom, to be on the level of God. Her desire overcame her logic, and she ate from the tree. After she ate, suddenly her eyes were open, and she realized what she had done. All of her decisions were wrong, and as she continued, they only grew in their severity. She went from bad to worse. And I think what we're going to do is next week we're going to see just how eating from the tree changed everything and made the world a different place and why she would have continued to continue on this road of destruction. And with that, maybe again, us understanding we herald in the coming of Mashiach Sikainu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for, for listening. God bless and Shabbat Shalom.